in my house. We cannot leap to witchcraft. Now look here, Mr. Paris. I've taken your part in all contention here, and I would continue, but I cannot if you hold back in this. There are hurtful, vengeful spirits laying hands on these children. Thomas, you cannot... Anne, tell Mr. Paris what you've done. Reverend Paris, I have buried seven babies unbaptized. Believe me, sir, you never saw more healthy babies. Yet each one withered in my arms the very night they were born. Now this year, I see my Ruth, my only. I see her turning strange. She's become a secretive child this year, and she shrivels like a sucking mouth while pulling on her life too. So I sent her to your Elena. To Elena? What may Elena? She knows how to speak to the dead. Dear Anne, it's, it's a terrible sin to conjure up the dead. I take it on my soul. But who else will tell us you murdered my babies? Woman. They were murdered, Mr. Paris. 
and mark this market. The snake, I swear my roof were ever so close to their little spirits. I know it, sir. But how else is she now struck to them? Except some power of darkness silences her. It is a sign. Don't you understand? There is a murdering witch among us, bound to keep herself in the dark. Let your enemies think what they will. You cannot ignore it. Then you were conjuring no, spirits no, off! No, not I. Ruth and Elena have he. Now I'm ruined. You are not ruined. Take charge. Wait for no one to accuse you. Declare it yourself. You have discovered witchcraft. In my house. In my house, Thomas. Don't topple me with this. Don't make of it. Excuse me. I wondered how Betty is. Why aren't you home? Who's with Ruth? Her grandmother came. I think she's improved a little. She gave a powerful sneeze before. Well, that's a sign of life. Thomas, will you leave me now? I wish to pray a while alone. Uncle, you've prayed since midnight. Why not go down no. and... No. I'll wait till Mr. Hale arrives. Now look, if you strike out against the devil, then the village will bless you for it. Come down. Speak to them. Pray with them. They're thirsting for your word, Mister. Surely you'll pray with them. I have no stomach for disputes this morning. I've had enough contention since I came. I want no more. I'll leave them in a psalm. Mercy, you go home to Ruth. You're here. Yes, Mrs. Butler. If she starts for the window, cry for me at once. Yes, Uncle. Miss Ruth's sick. It's weird. She seems to walk like someone dead since last night. Now look. They question us, tell them we danced, told them that much already, and what more? I saw you naked. Oh, jeez. I'd just come from the farm. They were all talking witchcraft. They'll be calling us witches, Abby. Abby, we've got to tell. Witchcraft is a hanging crime. A hanging like they did in Boston two years ago. We must tell the truth, Abby. You will only be whipped for dancing. We'll. Be whipped. She means to tell. I only looked. Oh, what great giving creatures you have. Betty. Now, Betty, wake up now. It's Abigail. I'll beat you, Betty. Ma, you seem to be improving. Now, I talked to your father already, and I told him everything, so there's nothing more you can You! You drank blood, Abby. You drank blood. Betty, you will never say that. You will never. You did! You did. You drank a charm. To kill John Proctor's wife. You drank a charm. To murder Mrs. Proctor. Shut it! Now shut it! Now look you. All of you. We danced. And Elena conjured Ruth Putman's dead sisters. And that is all. Words, like the words, other things. And I will come to you with some black eye and I will do terrible things that will shudder you. No, I can do it. Commit, you wish you would never see the sun go down. Now you stop this! Get down! 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 Foolish Mary Warren. Are you deaf? Didn't I forbid you leave the house? Now get home. My wife's waiting for your work. I best be off. I have my roof to watch. Good morning, Mr. Proctor. She's only gone to sell it somehow. She'll come out with it. So she tries to fly, eh? Where are her wings? Sean, you don't believe that. The road past my house is a pilgrimage all morning. The town's mumbling witchcraft. Nonsense. We danced in the woods last night. 
my uncle leapt out and was, she took fright, that's all. Dancing by moonlight. You'll be in jail before you're 20. <sighs> Give me a sign, John. No, Abby. That's done with. Come see what mischief your uncle's brewing now. Put it out of mind, Abby. John, I wait for you every Abby, night. Abby, put it out of your mind. I won't be coming for you anymore. You know me better. I know how you clutch my back behind your house. Spattered like a stallion whenever I came in. I saw your face and she put me out. You loved me then, and you do now. That's a wild thing to say. And a wild thing may say wild things. John, I've seen you looking out at night. I've not left my farm for seven months. I can't sleep for dreaming about you. Dreaming you'll be coming through my door. Child. Would you call me child? Abby. I may think of you softly from time to time. But I will cut off my hand before I ever reach for you again. Wipe it from your mind. We never touched. Yes, but we did. But we did not. Oh, I marvel how such a strong man be led to sickly white. You'll say nothing about Elizabeth! She's blackening my name in the village. She's spreading lies about me. She's a cold, snivelling woman, and you bent her. Let it turn! Are you me looking for a whipping? You took me from my sleeve and put knowledge in my heart. How could I go back being what I was? You love me, John Proctor. Whatever sin it is, you still love me. What's happened? What are you doing to her? Betty! She heard you singing and suddenly she's up to screaming. This song, this song, she cannot hear the Lord's name. Oh God forbid! Mark it for a sign, mark it! It's a definite sign of witchcraft afoot. Oh, my mother told me that. When they cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. Rebecca, Rebecca, go to her. We're lost. She suddenly cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. What have you done? For the love Please of God. Please be calm here, Jot. Please, keep quiet. I've not said a word. No one here can say I've said a word. She gonna fly again. Pray, calm yourself. I have 11 children and I'm 26 times a night. I've seen them all through their silly seasons. I think she'll wake when she tides ties of this. Let her come to you. Oh, this is no silly season, Rebecca. My Ruth is bewildered, Rebecca. She cannot eat. Perhaps she's not hungry yet. <clears throat> Mr. Paris, I hope you've not decided to go in search of loose spirits. I've heard the promise that outside. There's a wide opinion running through the parish that the devil may be among us. And I would like to satisfy them that they are wrong. Then come out and call them wrong. Are you our minister or Mr. Hale? Did you consult the church wardens before he brought in Hale to look for devils? He is not coming to look for devils! Then what's he coming to look for? There are children dying in the village. I see nobody dying. This society will not be a bag to swing around your head. I am sick of meetings. Why must we go through another meeting? Because we all have equal say in this Don't society! Be calm. Mr. Paris, I think you should send Mr. Hale back as soon as he arrives. We will start arguing again, and we had hoped for peace this year. I think we ought to lie on Dr. Briggs now, in good prayer. Rebecca, the doctor is baffled. Then let us go to God for the cause of it. There's terrible danger seeking of the spirits, and I fear it. I fear it. Let us rather blame ourselves in- How may we blame ourselves? I am one of nine sons. The Putnam family is people this province. You I have only one child left of eight, and now she shrivels. I cannot fathom that. Oh, but I must! You think it right that you never lose a child, and yet I must bury all but one! When Mr. Hale comes, you will proceed to look for signs of witchcraft. Yeah? <laughs> you cannot command, Mr. Paris. We vote by name in this society, not by acreage. I never heard you so worried on this society, Mr. Proctor. I don't think I saw you at church since snow fell. I have trouble enough without I come five miles to hear him preach only hellfire and bloody damnation. There are many others who stay away from the church these days because he hardly ever mentions God anymore. There is some truth in that. Many fear to bring the children. I cannot preach for children. There are many that 
neglectful of their duties to this ministry. I'm supposed to be supplied with wood, but I've had none since November. You are allowed £60 to buy your wood. I regard that as part of my salary. I'm paid little enough that I spend £60 on wood. You have your salary plus £60. I am not used to this poverty. I left a thriving business to serve the Lord. I do not understand why I'm persecuted here. I cannot offer one proposition without a howling riot. I have wondered if the devil be in it somewhere. You are the first minister ever to demand the deeds to this land. I am your third preacher in seven years. I do not wish to be put out like a cat whenever some majority feels the whim. You people seem not to comprehend that a ministry is not to be so lightly crossed and contradicted. Yes, and there that's is the truth. There is either obedience or the church will burn like hell is burning. Can you speak one minute without we land in hell again? I'm sick of hell. It is not for you to say what is good for you to hear. I think I may speak my heart. I may speak mine. Tell that to your followers. My followers? There's a party in this church. I'm not blind. There is a faction and a party. Against you? Against him and all authority. Then I will find it and join it. He doesn't mean that. But I do mean it, Rebecca. I do not like the smell of this authority. I have a crop to sow and lumber to get home. <laughs> what say you, Giles? Let's find this party. I've changed my opinion of this man. Mr. Paris, I beg your pardon. I never thought you had so much iron in you. Well, thank you, Giles. Explains what the problem's been with us all these years, though. Think about it. Why is everybody suing everybody else? I've been in court six times this year. Is it the devil's fault a man cannot say good morning to you without you clapping for defamation? John Proctor, I've only last month received four pounds damages for you publicly saying I burned the roof off your house. I never said no such thing, but I paid you for it anyway. Now come along, Charles. Help me get my lumber home. A, a moment, Mr Proctor. What lumber is it you are taking home? My lumber from the forest by the river. What anarchy is this? That forest is on my land. I bought that land off Francis Nurse five that months ago. From my grandfather's will. And your grandfather had a habit of willing land that wasn't his own. That's true. You nearly will win my north pasture, but you knew I'd break his fingers. <laughs> Come on, John, let's get your lumber on. You know why I'm your mind. I'm a man here. I've got a ring. Ray, and... you. Come on, take these. Mr. Hale, it's good to see you again. They're heavy. It must be. They are weighted with authority. You come prepared. You need hard study if it comes to tracking down the old boy. You cannot be Rebecca Nurse. I am, sir. Do you know me? You look at such a good soul should, and we've all heard of the great charities in Dublin. And do you know this gentleman, Mr. Thomas Putnam, Miss Goodbye Fan? Putnam? I not expected such distinguished company, sir. It does not seem to help us today, Mr. Hare. Will you come to our house and look at our child? Your child ails too. Her soul seems flown away. She sleeps and yet she walks. She cannot eat. Cannot eat? You men also have plenty of children. No, no, these are farmers. John Proctor. He doesn't believe in witches. Hey, I never spoke on witches one way or the other. Will you come, Giles? No, no, I don't think so. I have a few questions of my own to ask this man. I hear you're a sensible man, Mr. Hale. I hope he'll leave some of it in town. Will you look at my daughter, sir? She's tried to leap out the window. We discovered her on the high road this morning, waving her arms as though she fly. Tries to fly. She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name, Mr. Hale. That's a sure sign of which. No, God. no. Now let me instruct you. We cannot look to superstition in this. The devil is precise. The marks of his presence are definite as stone. We must look only for his proper signs and judge nothing beforehand. I must tell you all now. I shall go no further in this, unless you are prepared to believe me, should I find no trace of hell in her. It is agreed, sir. It is agreed. We shall abide by your judgment. Good, then. And what were your first warnings of this strangeness? Why, sir, I discovered her, my niece Abigail, and ten or twelve other girls dancing in the forest. You permit dancing? No, no, it was in secret. Well, Mr. Paris's servant has knowledge of country, We cannot sir. be sure of that. I I'm... know it! 
I sent my child to Elena so that she could learn who murdered her sisters. Ah, you sent a child to conjure the dead. Oh, let God blame me. Not you. Not you, Rebecca. I'll not have you judging me anymore. Mr. Hill, is it a natural work to lose seven children before they live a day? Seven dead in childbirth? Yes. Have no fear. The devil is truly come among us. I shall find him, and I intend to crush him utterly. Will it hurt the child, sir? I cannot, sir. The devil is truly in her. We may have to rip and tear to get her through. I think I'll go then. I cannot watch this. Why, Rebecca, you may open up the boil of all our troubles today. Let us hope for that. I go to God for you, sir. I hope you do not mean to go to Satan here. I wish I knew. Come, Mr. Hale, let's get on. Mr. Hale, I've always wanted to ask a learned man what signifies the reading of strange books. What book? I can't tell. She hides them. Martha, my wife. I thought I'd walk in night and found her in a corner, reading a book. She's so wrapped she ignores me now. What do you make of that? Well, that's not necessarily. It worries me. Last night, Marcus, I tried and I tried and I could not say my prayers. And she closed the book and left the house and suddenly I could pray again. The stoppage of prayer. No, no, that is strange. I'd like to be further on that with you. I'm not saying she's touched the devil, mind you. But I admire her know what books she reads and yes. why she hides them. We'll discuss it. Tomorrow, Mr. Now mark me, if the devil is truly in her, you will witness some frightful wonders in this room, so please, keep your wits about you. Mr. Putnam, stay close in case she flies. Now Betty dear, can you hear me? I am John Hale, Minister of Beverly. I come to help you, child. Someone afflict you. It need not be a woman, mind you, nor a man. Perhaps some bird, invisible to others, or some beast. Does some figure bid you fly? Nomine, domine, sabur si felic it ad infernos. Abigail, what sort of dancing were you doing with her in the forest? My common dancing is all. I think I ought to say that I discovered a kettle in the grass where they were dancing. That were only soup. Soup? What sort of soup were in this kettle, Abigail? Why, it being at lintel, I think... Mr. Paris, do not notice any living thing near this kettle. A frog... Uh, that frog jumped in. We never put it in. Abigail, it may be your cousin is dying. Did you call the devil last night? I never called him. Elena called him. She called the devil? You must speak with this Elena. How did she call him? I don't know. With a strange chance. I did not notice, did you, any strangeness as she called him? A sudden cold wind, perhaps? I didn't see the devil. Betty! Betty, oh, wake up now! Betty! Not a baby, Abigail. Did your cousin drink any of the brew in that She chair? never drank it. Did you drink it? No, sir. Elena asked you to drink she it. She tried, but I refused. What are you concealing? Have you sold yourself to Lucifer? I never sold myself, sir. I'm a, I'm a good girl. I... I did drink from the kettle. She made me do it. She made Betty do it. Abby. She makes me drink blood. Blood? My baby's blood. No, chicken blood. I gave her chicken blood. Woman, have you enlisted these children for the devil? No, no, sir. I don't work for no devil. Then why can she not wake? Are you silencing this child? What have you done to Betty? I love Betty. You have sent your spirit out upon these children. Are you gathering souls for the devil? She sets the spirit on me in church. She makes me laugh at prayer. She is often laughed at prayer. She comes to me every night to go and drink blood. You beg me to come to Abby. She begs me to make charms. Don't to lie! I'll tell you something. She comes to me every night whilst I sleep. She's always making me dream of corruptions. Sometimes I wake and find myself naked in a doorway. Abby. I always hear her laughing in my sleep. I hear her singing her songs and tempting me with I never. You compact with the devil. I didn't compact with no devil. You will confess yourself, or I will take you out and whip you to your death, Elena. This worm must be hanged! Take it in hand! No, 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 hang me. I told him I didn't desire to work for him, sir. For who? The devil. Now, Elena, I know when we bind ourselves to hell, it is very difficult to break them. But I would help you tear yourself free. You would be a good Christian woman, would you not, Elena? Yes, sir, a good Christian woman. And you love these girls? Yes, sir, I don't desire to hurt these girls. And you love God, Elena? I love God with all my heart. Now, in God's
God's holy name. Bless him, bless God. And to his glory. Eternal glory, bless the Lord. Open yourself, Elena, open yourself. Let God's holy light shine on you. Bless the Lord. When the devil comes to you, does he ever come with another person? Who comes with him? Is it man or woman? I don't know, it was dark. And Sarah right? Good! Did you see Sarah Good? Or Jane Osborne? Who was it? Bring the wind! You must have no fear to tell me, Elena. I will protect you. God bless you, Mr. Hale. Turn your back on the devil and help us cleanse this village. Who came to you with the devil? Perhaps someone else from the village. Someone you know. Who came to you with the devil? Two, three, four, how many? It was Paul. It was Paul. Who? Who? Their names! Their names! Oh, how many times he bid me kill you, Mr. Paris? Kill me? He said Mr. Paris is a bad man. Mr. Paris is a mean man. And he bid me rise out of my bed and cut your throat. I told him no, I don't want to kill that man. But he said you work for me, Elena. And I will make you. And I said, you lie, devil, you lie. But then he came to me one stormy night, and he said, look, I have others who work for me. And so I looked, and there, <coughs> Sarah Cook. Yes, sir. And Mrs. Osborne. I knew it. Osborne was midwife to me three times. I begged you, Thomas, did I not? I <coughs> did not call Osborne because I feared her. Babies always scribbled in her hands. Take courage. You must give us all their names. How can you bear to see these girls suffering, Elena? Look at her. Look at her God given innocence. Elena, the devil is out and preying on the flesh of the pure. God will bless you for your life. I must help. be honest. I want the light of God.
What keeps you so late? Someone stop. I was plotting out to the forest edge. Oh. You're done with? Yes. The farm's seeded. They will be safe. Pray now for a fair summer. Yes. I think we'll see Greenfield soon. It's warm beneath the clods. That's good. It's winter in here yet. You ought to bring some flowers in. I forgot. I will tomorrow. On Sunday, let's walk the farm together. I've seen such a lot of flowers, and lilacs with such a smell. It's beautiful here in spring. Yes. It's well seasoned. It's rabbit. Cider? Are you well today? You seem sad. Are you? You come so late I thought you'd go to town this afternoon. Why I have no business in town? You did speak of going early this week. I thought better of it. Mary Warren was there today. Why'd you let her go? You heard me forbid her go to town anymore. I forbid her go. And she raised up her chin and told me she must go to town. She's an official of the court, you see. Court? What court? It's a proper court they have now, John. She said they'd sent four judges out of Boston. Weighty magistrates. And that the heads, heads of the deputy governor. She's mad. I wish to God she were. She said they'd sent 14 people in the jail now. And they'll be tried. And the court will have the power to hang them too. No, they'll never hang. The deputy governor promised hanging if they don't confess, John. Tom's gone wild. Mary Warren said it's Abigail as though she were a saint. She leads the other girls into the court, and where she walks the crowd parts. The accused are brought before them, and if Abigail screams and howls and falls to the floor, the person's clapped in jail for bewitching her. You must go to town, John. You must tell him it's a fraud. Yes. You're right, I must. Go to Cheever, and tell him what Abigail said to you last week in her uncle's house. She said it had nothing to do with witchcraft, didn't she? She did. She did. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think they must be told. They must. It's mad to say believe her. You should go to town now, John. Tonight. I'll think about it. You cannot keep silent, John. I know I cannot keep silent. I said I'll think about it. Good, then. Let you I only wonder how I may prove what she told me, Elizabeth. She told it to me in a room alone. I have no proof for it. You were alone with her? For a moment alone, yes. Then it is not as you told me. For a moment, I say. The others came in soon after. Do as you wish, then. Woman, I'll not have your suspicion anymore. I have not. I'll not have it. I deserve respect. Then you must earn it. 
You doubt me still. John, if it were not Abigail that you must go to hurt, would you hesitate now? I don't think so. Now look you! I see what I see, John. You will not judge me, Elizabeth. I have good reason to think before I charge fraud on Abigail, and think I will. Look to your own improvement before you go to judge your husband. I have forgotten Abigail. You are not open with me. You forget nothing and forgive nothing. You said you saw her with a crowd. I have not left this farm for seven months. I have tiptoed around this place and I have not moved from here to here but to please you. Try and see some goodness in me. I come into court when I come into this house. I do not judge you. The magistrate that sits in your, sits in your heart judges you. I never thought you were a good man, John. Or you somewhat full of Oh, Elizabeth. Your justice would freeze beer. How dare you go to town when I forbid it? Do you mock me? I'll whip you if you dare leave this house again! I'm sick. I'm sick, Mr. Proctor. Please, do not hurt me. My insides are all shuddering. I have been in the proceedings all day, sir. And what of these proceedings here? When will you proceed to keep this house as you are paid to do? And my wife not fully well? I made a gift for you today, Mrs. Proctor. Uh, I had to sit long hours in a chair and pass the time of service. Why, thank you. It's a fair dot. You must all love each other now, Mrs. Proctor. Why, yes. Indeed, we must. I'll get up early in the morning and clean the house. I, I must sleep now. Mary, is it true there are 14 women arrested? No, sir. There are 39 now. Why, well, she's weeping. What ails you, child? Mrs. Osborne will hang. Hang? Hang, you say? Yes. The deputy governor will permit it? He sentenced her. He must, but not Sarah Good, for Sarah Good confessed. Confessed? To what? That she sometimes made a compact with Lucifer and wrote her name in this black book with her blood and bound herself to torment Christian and still God's thrown down and we almost worship hell for <coughs> But surely you know what a jabber she is. <coughs> Didn't you tell them that? Mr. Proctor, in open court, she nearly choked us all to death. How did she choke you? Oh, Mary, surely you She tried to kill me many times, Mrs. Proctor. I've never heard you mention that before. I never knew before. I never knew anything before. But when she came to the court, I, I said to myself, <coughs> I must not accuse this woman. She's so very old and poor, but then she sat there denying and denying, and I, I felt a, a misty coldness climbing up my back. And, and the skin on my skull began to creep, and then I felt a clamp around my neck, and I, I could not breathe. And then I heard a voice, a screaming voice, and it was my voice. And all at once, I remembered everything she had done to me. And what has she done to you? So many times, the fuck she come to this very door begging bread and a cup beside her. And whenever I turned her away, she mumbled. Mumbled? She may mumble if she's hungry. But what does she mumble? You must remember, Mrs. Proctor, last month, a Monday, I think. She walked away from the bus for two days after. Do you remember it? Why, I do, I think. And so I told that to just half on, and he said, This is good, he asks. What curse do you mumble that girls fall sick after turning you away? And then she replied, Why, your excellence, no curse at all. I say only my commandments. I hope I may say my commandments. And that's a good answer. Yeah. Then the half on said, Recite for us your commandments. And of all the ten, she couldn't say a single one. She never knew her commandments in her head and a flat lie. And condemned her. Well, they have to when she condemned herself. But the proof, what is the proof? I told you the proof, it's hard proof. Hard as what the judges said. You will not go to that court again, Mary Warren. I must tell you, sir, I'll be gone every day now. I'm amazed you do not see what weighty work we do. What work you do? It's strange work for a Christian girl to hang old women. Perhaps they will not hang them if they confess. Sarah will only sit in jail some time. And here's a wonder for you. Mrs. Good is pregnant. <laughs> pregnant? Are they mad? The woman's near to 60. They had Dr. Griggs examine her and she's full to the brim. And smoking a pipe all these years and no husband either. <coughs> oh, but she's safe, thank God. But they'll not hurt the innocent child. But be that not a marvel? You must see it. So it's God's work we do. So, so I'll be gone every day now. I'm, 
an official of the court, they say. Oh, official you! You cannot stand whipping anymore, Mr. Proctor. The devil's loose in town. You must discover where he's hiding. I will whip the devil out of you! I will whip your life today. I am accused. You were mentioned, but, but I said I, I never saw any sign. You ever sent your spirit out to hurt no one, and since I do live so closely with you, they, they dismissed him. Who accused me? I'm bound by law. I, I cannot tell it. Go to bed. I'll not be ordered to bed anymore, Mr. Proctor. I am 18 and a woman, however single. You wish to sit up? Sit up then. I, I wish to go to bed. Good night then. Good night. Oh, the noose, the noose is up. There'll be no noose. You heard her, and you were told we could come to this. They dismissed it, you heard her say. And what about tomorrow? She'll cry me out until they take me. Sit down. John, she wants me dead, John. I said sit down. Now we must be wise. Three. Fear nothing, Elizabeth. I'll find Cheever tomorrow. I'll tell him she said it was all sport. John, there's so many in the jail more than that's needed now. You must do this for me. Go to Abigail. And what have I to say to Abigail? John, for me, you have a faulty understanding of young girls. There was a promise made in any bed. What promise? Spoke all silent. A promise is made. She dotes on it now, I know it. And she plans to kill me. And then take my place. It's her dearest hope, John. There is a danger in calling such a name as mine. I know Mrs. Gunn that sleeps in ditches. Not Osborne, drunk and half witted. She dare not call me out unless there were much to be gained by it. She thinks to take my place. She cannot think it. John, have you ever shown contempt? She cannot pass you in the church without you blushing. I blush for my sin! I and, and what do you see? What do you see, Elizabeth? I think you're ashamed. Because I'm there. And she's so close. When will you know me, woman? Were I a rock, I would have cracked for shame this seven months. Then go. Then tell her she's a whore. <coughs> Whatever promise she may send to John, Good then. I'll go. Good evening. Mr. Hale. Good evening. Come in. I hope I did not start you. No. I didn't hear you knock. You are Mrs. Proctor. Yes. Elizabeth. I hope you're not to bed yet. No, Mr. Hill. And we're not used to visitors after dark. But you are welcome. Will you sit, sir? Well. Are you down, Mr. Proctor? A drink of cider, Mr. Hale. Oh, no. <coughs> Bells in my stomach, and I've yet more travel tonight. Sit you down, sir. I will not keep you long, but I have some business with you. Business of the court? No, not, not business of the court. I call my own without its authority. I don't know if you're aware, Mr. Proctor, that your wife's name is mentioned. We know it, sir. Mary Warren told us. We're entirely amazed. I am a stranger here, as you know. In my ignorance, I find it hard to draw a clear opinion of those accused before the court. But this afternoon, and now tonight, I go to the house to the house. I come now from Rebecca Nurse's house. And Rebecca's child? Surely you cannot think so. These are strange times. No man may doubt the forces of darkness are gathered in attack upon this town. There is too much evidence to deny it. You will agree, sir. I have no knowledge in that line. But it's hard to think so, pious a woman, be secretly in bed with the devil after forty years of such good prayer. The devil is a wily one. However, she is far from accused, and I know she will not be. I would like, sir, to put some questions as to the Christian character of this house. You'll permit me. We have no fear of questions, sir. Good then. Look at record that Mr. Paris keeps. I know you are rarely in church on Sabbath day. No, sir, you are mistaken. Only twenty-six times in seventeen months, sir. I must call that rare. Mr. Hale! I never knew I must account to that man as to whether I come to church or not. And my wife was sick this winter. So I am told. You, sir, why did you not come alone? I did when I could. 
and when I could not, I prayed in this house. Your house is not a church, sir. Surely your theology tells you that. It does. And it tells me a minister may pray to God without gold candlesticks on the altar. What candlesticks? Since we built the church, we had pewter candlesticks made, out of love, by the hand of Francis Nurse. But since Paris arrived, he prayed every week for gold until he had them. I work hard, and it hurts me to see my money glaring at his elbows. And that man dreams of cathedrals, not clapboard meeting houses. <coughs> and yet the Christian on Sabbath day must be in church. Helen, you have three children. Yes, boys. How is it only two are baptised? I don't like it that Mr. Parrish should lay his hand upon my baby. I see no light of God in that man. I'll not conceal it. I must say, sir, that it's not for you to decide. The man's ordained, therefore the light of God is in him. It may be I've been too quick to bring him to book. But you can't think we ever desired the destruction of religion. <laughs> That's in your head, isn't it? There is goodness in your record, sir. I think maybe we've been too harsh on Mr. Parrish. We never turn from God here. No, no, no. I do. There is no mark of blame upon my life, Mr. Hale. I am a covenanted Christian woman. And you, sir? I'm sure I do. Repeat them then. <coughs> the commandments? Yes. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's goods, nor make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt honour thy father and mother. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear unto thee any graven image. You said that twice, sir. Yes. Adultery, John. Yes. You see, sir, between the two of us we know them all. I think it'd be a small fault theology. It's a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted small. There is no love for Satan! I pray it! I pray it dearly. God keep you both. Good night. Mr. Hale, I think you suspect. Proctor, I do not judge you. My duty is to act what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. Good night, sir. You must tell him, John. What's that? Will you tell him? I have no witness and cannot prove it. But I know the child's sickness has nothing to do with witchcraft. Nothing to do? Uh, they were discovered by Mr. Parrish sporting in the woods. They were scared and took sick. Told you this. Abigail Williams. Abigail. She told me the day he came, sir. Why did you keep this secret? I never knew until tonight the world had gone so mad with this nonsense. Nonsense? Mr. Proctor, I myself have examined Elena, Sarah and numerous others accused of dealing with the devil, and they have confessed it, sir. And why not if they must hang for denying it? Who would not confess to anything when threatened with hanging? Have you never thought of that? I have. I have indeed. Testifies this in the court. I have not reckoned of going to court. But if I must, I will. You falter then. I falter nothing. But I wonder if I'll be believed in such a court. When a minister as steady minded as you is suspicious of a woman that's never lied. She can't lie. And the world knows it. Well, to be open with me now, for I've heard something that troubles me. He said that you may not even believe there are witches in the world. Is that true, sir? I have no knowledge of them. The Bible speaks of witches, and I will not deny it. <coughs> I cannot believe. You cannot? I cannot believe the devil may own a woman's soul, Mr. Hale, when she keeps such an upright way as I do. I'm a good woman. I know it. And if you believe I may do only good work in this world, yet be secretly bound to Satan. Then I must tell you, sir, I do not believe it. If you think I am one, then I say they do not exist. Sure, you do not fly into the gospel. The gospel. Uh, she does not mean to doubt the gospel, sir. This is a Christian house. I'll keep you both. The third child quickly baptised.
go to both without fail each Sunday with the Sabbath prayer. Keep a quiet, solemn look at John! The Charles, what's the matter? Take my wife and Rebecca nurse. Rebecca's in the jail? John Cheever came and arrested her. We've just come for the jail now and we'll not even let us in to see them. They've surely gone wild now, Mr. Hale. Reverend Hale, you not speak to the Deputy Governor. Surely he mistakes his people. Pray calm yourself, Mr. My Mr. wife is the very brick and mortar of this church, Mr. Hale. And Martha Corey, there cannot be a woman closer yet to God than Martha. How is it Rebecca's charge, Mr. Nurse? She's, She's charged with murder for the miraculous and supernatural murder of Mrs. Putnam's babies. What can I do, Mr. Hale? Believe me, Mr. Nurse, if Rebecca is tainted, and there's nothing left to stop the whole green world from burning. Trust to the justice of the court. The court will send her home, I know it. You can't be to be tried in the jail. How may such a woman murder children? Man, remember until an hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful in heaven. I never said my wife were a witch, Mr. Hale. I only said you were reading books. Mr. Court, exactly what complaint was made against your wife? That bloody Mongol Walcott charged her. You see, he bought a pig up of me four or five years ago, and they died soon after. So we came dancing for his money back, and my mother said to him, Walk on, you haven't got the sense to feed a pig, you'll not live to own many. Now he goes to the court and says that from that day to this, he cannot keep a pig alive for more than four weeks, because my mother bewitched them with her books. Good evening. Good evening to you, John Crofton. Mr. Cheever. Good evening. I hope you don't come on business at the court. I do, Proctor. Clerk of the court now. I have a warrant for your wife. A warrant for my wife? Who's charged her? Abigail Williams. Abigail Williams? On what proof? Mr. Proctor, I have little time. The court ordered me to search your house, but I do not want to do that. So will you hand over any dolls that your wife keeps here? Dolls? Not that dolls since I was a girl. What is that, Miss Proctor? Why, this is Mary's. Do you hear? Has the court discovered a meaning in dolls now? Do you keep any others around the house? No, nor this one either till tonight. Woman, can you come with me? She will not. Fetch Mary here. What signifies a doll, Mr. Cheaper? Well, they say it may signify that. Well, what's that? It's a needle. <laughs> and what signifies a needle? The girl, the Williams girl, Abigail Williams. She sat to dinner at Reverend Harris's house tonight. Without word nor warning, she fell to the floor. A struck beast, he says. And she screamed. Such a scream. He went to save her, of course, and he drew a needle. So two inches of the flesh of her belly. When he demanded how it came to be there, she testified that it were your wife's spirits stuck it in. She stuck that needle in herself! Surely you're not taking this to proof, oh, Mr. Hale. it is hard proof. I find her a doll kept by Miss Proctor. I have found her, sir. And in the belly of the doll there is stuck a needle. I swear to you, Mr. Proctor, I have never wanted to see such proof of health, and I would not to obstruct me. Here, now! How did this doll come into my house? What does that This doll! This doll! It is yours, is it not? Yes, sir. And how did it come into my house? I made it in the court, sir, and gave it to Mrs. Proctor tonight. Now, sir, do you have it? Mary Warren, a needle was found inside this doll. I meant no harm by it, sir. You stole that needle in yourself! I, I believe, believe I did, sir. What do you say now? Mary. Surgeons is your natural memory. Perhaps someone comes to you even now as you say this. Oh, just me. Well, I know, sir. I, I myself, I think. Uh, ask Santa Walcott. She saw me sewing it in court. Uh, ask Abby. Abby sat beside me when I made it. Charge of cold and cruel murder on Abigail. Murder? I, I charge no Abigail murder. was stabbed tonight. A needle was found stuck in her belly. And she charges me? Yes. Why, the girl is murdered. She must be ripped out of the world. Oh, you heard that. Ripped out of the world. You heard it. Out of here! You're in the deputy governor's warrant, man! Damn the deputy governor! Out of my house! Now, Proctor. Ah! Get out! Go with them! You are a broken minister! She is innocent, but. If she is innocent! Why do you never wonder if Paris is innocent? Or Abigail? Is the accuser always holy now? I'll tell you what's walking this town. Vengeance is walking this town. We are what we always were. 
But now the children are jangling the keys of the kingdom and common vengeance writes the law. This warrant is vengeance. I will not give my wife to vengeance! You will not chain a damn you man! Will you see her taken? The court is just. Pontius Pilate! God will not let you wash your hands of this! When the children won't see nothing of witchcraft, it'll scare them. I'll bring you home soon, Elizabeth! Please, please come soon. I'll fall like an ocean on that court! Fear nothing! I'll fear nothing. This is Proctor. Out of my sight. Charity, Proctor, charity. What I've heard in her favour, I will not fear to testify in the court. God help me, I cannot judge her guilty or innocent. I do not know. When we consider this, the world goes mad, and it profits no one if you lay the cause of it to the vengeance of a little girl. You are a broken minister. Speak about it tomorrow. Go home, Giles. We'll come earlier. Yeah? Yes. Go now, Giles. that court tomorrow. You will tell them how that doll came into my house and who stuck the needle in. She'll kill me for saying that. I'll have your charge led you on you, Mr. Proctor. She's told you. I know it, sir. She'll ruin you with it. I, I know she will. Good. Then I say when this is done with. We will slide together into hell! You will tell the court what you know. I cannot. to show that you've given yourself to reading fortunes. Do you deny it? I have read fortunes, but I am innocent of being a witch. I do not know what a witch is. How do you know then that you're not a witch? If I were, I would know it. Why do you hurt these children? I do not hurt them. I scorn it. I have evidence for the court. You will keep your seat. Thomas Putnam is reaching out for land. Remove that man, Marshal. Here it lies! Lies! Arrest them, Excellency! I have evidence for the court! Why will you not hear my evidence? How dare you come roaring into this court, Corey? You gone daft! Don't call me daft, Hathorn. You're not a Boston judge yet. Who are you? <laughs> Giles Corey, sir. I have asked a question and I can answer it. My name is Corey, sir. Giles Corey. I have 600 acres and timber in addition. It is my wife you're condemning now. And how do you imagine to help her cause with such contemptuous riot? The tenor lies about my wife, sir. You take it upon yourself to decide what this court you believe one of us will set aside. Your Excellency, we mean no disrespect, disrespect for. Indeed. It is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme government of this province. Do you know it? I never said my wife were a witch, sir. I only said you were reading books and they come and they take her off my books. house for.
She is my third wife, sir. I never had a wife that be so taken with books to understand, sir. And I thought to find the meaning of it, but I did not call her a witch. Excellency, he claims hard evidence for his wife's defence. I think in the name of justice... Let him submit his evidence and proper affidavits. You are certainly aware of our procedure here, Mr. Hale. That is true. Please, sir, we've been waiting here three days. We've not been heard. Who is this man? Francis Nurse, Your Excellency. Wives Rebecca, they were condemned this morning. We have proof, sir. They're all deceiving you. This is contempt, sir. Contempt! Please, Sir Chapel. Do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? I surely do, sir. And I know you must be wise to be what you are. Do you know that the 400 are in the jails upon my signature? Aye. The 72 condemned to hang by that signature? I never thought to say such a weighty judge, but you are deceived. Mary Warren? What? What are you about here? She wishes to speak with the Deputy Governor. She's been struggling with us all week, and now she comes to tell you the truth. Who is this? John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, your Excellency. This man is I Miss Jim Moss. Hear the girl, sir. Please. Please. What would you tell us, Mary Warren? She never saw any spirits, sir. Never saw any spirits? Never. She signed a deposition. No, no, I accept no deposition. Mr. Proctor, have you given out the story in the village? We have not. They could have thought this court and the Mr. Paris, hold your peace! <coughs> you know, Mr. Proctor, that the entire contention in these trials is that the voice of God is speaking through the children. I know, sir. And you, Mary Warren. How came you to cry out people, sending their spirits against you? It was pretense, sir. I knew the girls. Susanna Walcott and the others? They are also pretending. Yes, sir. Surely you're not going to let such a terrible lie be heard in open court. You did court. not. Now, Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether I shall hear you or not, it is my duty to tell you this. We burn a hot fire here. It melts down all concealment. Are you certain in your conscience, mister, that your evidence is the truth? It is. And you will surely know it. I take it you come here to declare this evidence in the open court before the public. I thought I would, yes. With your permission. Yes, sir. What is your purpose in doing so? Well, I'd free my wife, sir. Oh, that's no we're in your heart. You're hidden in your spirit any desire to undermine this court. No, sir. Have you seen the devil? I have not. And you're a good Christian? I am, sir. One that never comes to church more than once a month. I'll go to church. I have no love for Mr. Paris. It's no secret. I tell you straight, Mr. I have seen marvels in this court. I have seen people choked before my eyes by spirits. I have seen them stuck by pins and slashed by daggers. I have until this moment not the slightest reason to suspect that the children may be deceiving me. Do you understand what I mean? Excellency. Does it not strike you that so many of these women have lived without any doubt about their reputation? If you read your gospel, you know that Cain was an upright man, and yet he killed Abel. But who tells us that Rebecca Nurse killed seven of her babies? It's the children only. <laughs> and this one will swear she lied to you. Chapel. This, this is the woman. Yes, she is the one. Mr. Proctor, this morning your wife sent me a claim in which she states that she is pregnant now. My wife pregnant? There is no sign of it. Although we have examined her, her body. But if she says she's pregnant, she must be. And that woman will never lie. She will not. Never, sir. Never. Mr. Proctor. If I should tell you now that I will keep another month, and if she begins to show her natural signs, you shall have her living another year until she is delivered. What do you say to that? So you say your only purpose is to save your wife. But then she has saved at least this year, and the year is long. What do you say? Will you drop this charge? I think I cannot. And your purpose is somewhat larger. You've come to overthrow this court, Your Honour. These men are my friends. The wives are also. I you not, sir. I'm ready to hear your evidence. I do not come to her. Mr. Paris, go into the court and bid Judge Stroud and Judge Sewell declare recess for one hour. Or 
or witnesses and prisoners are to remain in the building. What deposition do you have for us? And I beg you to be clear. Open. And honest. Will you read this first, sir? It's a sort of testament. The people signing it declare their good opinion of Rebecca and my wife and Martha Corey. If you'll notice, sir, they've known the women many years and never saw any signs they had dealings with the devil. How many names are here? Ninety-one, Your Excellency. These people should be summoned for question. Mr. Danforth, I gave them on my word no harm will come to them for signing this. This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defence an attack upon the court? Mr. Chief, I have warrants drawn for all these. Arrest for examination. Now, Mr. what other information do you have for us? You may see. Can I spark trouble on these people? No, I'm not hurt these people if they're of good conscience. But you must understand, sir, that a person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. There is no road between. <laughs> she's not hearty, I see. No, sir, she's not. Remember the angel Raphael, what he says to the boy Tobias. Remember it? Yes. Do that which is good. And no harm shall come to thee. Come, man. We wait you. <coughs> this is my deposition. Yes. <laughs> what lawyer drew this, Corey? You know, I've never hired a lawyer in my life, Hathorn. It is. Very well phrased. My compliments, Mr. Mr. Paris, Mr. Potter is in the court. Bring him in. You have no legal training, Mr. Corum. I have the best. I have 66 times in court and always plays it too. Oh, then you are much put upon. I'm not put upon. I know my rights and I will have them. Yes, there it is. Mr. Potter. I have here an accusation by Mr. Corey against you, in which he states that you called and prompted your daughter to cry witchery upon George Jacobs, who is now in jail. It is a lie. What proof do you submit for your charge, sir? My proof is there. If Jacob's hands for a witch, he forfeit of his property. That's law. And there is only Putnam with the coin to buy such a great piece. This man is killing his neighbours for their land. Proof, sir. Proof. The proof is there. I have from an honest man who heard Putnam say it. The day his daughter cried out on Jacob's, he said she'd given him a fair gift of land. At the name of this man. I'm not give you a name. I gave my wife's name once, and I'll burn it long after that. In that case, I have no choice but to arrest you in contempt of this court. Do you know that? This is a hearing. You cannot clap me for contempt of a hearing. Oh, it is a proper lawyer. <coughs> Do you wish me to declare the court in full session here? Or will you give me a good reply? I cannot, sir. You are a foolish man. Mr. Chiva, begin the record. The court is now in session. I ask you, Mr. Corey. He has a story and confidence. The sir. devil lives on such confidences. Without confidences, there could be no conspiracy, Your Honor. I think it must be broken, sir. If your informant tells the truth, let him come here openly, like a decent man. But if he hides in anonymity, I must know why. Now, sir, the court and central church demand of you the name of him who reported Mr. Thomas <coughs> Potter, a common murderer. <coughs> We cannot ignore this any longer, sir. There is great fear of this country. Not reproach me, we fear of the country. There is fear in the country because there is a plot to topple Christ. It's not stand reason that everyone accuses No, no uncorrupted man, you fear this court, Mr. Hale. No. Mr. Corey, you are under arrest in contempt of this court. Now sit down and take counsel with yourself, or you will be set in the jail until you decide to answer all questions. No, Giles. I'll cut you off, I'll put them! I'll kill you yet! Peace, Charles, peace! We'll prove ourselves you will. Say no more, John. He means to hang us all! This is a court of law, Mr. Mr. Forgive him, sir! We'll prove it all now. You cannot weep, Mary. Remember the angel, what he says to the boy. Hold to it now. There's your rock. This is Mary Warren's deposition, sir. I'd ask you to remember that until two weeks ago she was no different than the other children are today. You heard her scream. She howled. She swore evil spirits, choked her. 
She even swore that Satan, in the form of women now in jail, tried to win her soul. And when she refused we to- We know all this. Yes. She declares she never saw Satan. And her friends are lying now. A deposition, Mr. Proctor. Excellency, this cuts right to the heart of the matter. Such a waste claim cannot be argued by a farmer. Let him go home and come back with a lawyer. Now look, Mr. Hale. I have signed 72 death warrants. I do not want to take a life without unquestionable proof. And do you doubt my justice? This morning I signed away the soul of Rebecca Nurse, Your Honor. And my hand still shakes. Let him bring a lawyer. I would like to question- Mr. Parachute is silent! Mr. Chief, would you go into the courtroom with the children? Mary Warren. How have you come to this turnabout? Has Mr. Proctor threatened you for this deposition? No, sir. Has he ever threatened you? No, sir. Then you tell me. That you sat in my court, callously lying when you knew that people would hang by your evidence. Answer me! I, I did, sir. What have you been taught in your life? Do you not know that God damns all liars? Or is it now that you lie? No, sir. I, I'm with God now. You're with God now? Yes, sir. I will tell you this. You are either lying now, or you are lying in the court. And in either case, you have committed perjury and you will go to jail for it. You cannot lightly say you lied, Mary. Do you know that? I cannot lie anymore. I, I am with God. Sit down. Your friend, Mary Warren, has given us a deposition she states that she never saw familiar spirits, apparitions, nor any manifest of the devil. She claims as well that none of you have seen these things either. Now, this is a court of law, the law, based upon the Bible. It's not escaping that this deposition may be devised to blind us. May well be that Mary Warren has been conquered by Satan, who sent her here to distract us. So her neck will break for it. But if she is telling the truth, I tell you now, drop your guile and confess your pretense. A quick confession will go easier with you. Abigail Williams, rise. Is there any truth in this? No, sir. Will either of you change your positions now? Or do you force me to hard question her? We have nothing to change, sir. Will you still go on with this? Yes, sir. A doll was discovered in Mr. Proctor's house. Stabbed by a needle. Mary Warren claimed that you sat beside her in the court when she made it. And witness how she stuck her needle into it for safekeeping. What do you say to that? It is a lie, sir. Well, you work for Mrs. Proctor. Did you see dolls in that house? Mrs. Proctor always kept dolls. You are alone. I've never kept no dolls. Your Excellency, Mr. Chief, when I spoke with Mrs. Proctor in that house, she said she never kept any dolls. But she did when she was a girl. <laughs> She's not been a girl these 15 years, Your Honor. But a doll will keep 15 years, will it not? It'll keep if it's kept. But Mary Warren swears she never saw any dolls in my house. Not anywhere else. Excellency, what benefit is it to Mary Warren to turn herself about? But what will she gain but hard questioning and worse? You're charging Abigail Williams with a plot to murder. Do you understand that? I do, sir. I believe she means to... to murder my wife. This child would murder your wife? <laughs> it is not a child, sir. Now, Amy. In the sight of the congregation, she was twice part of this meeting house for laughter during prayer. This laughter it's during prayer. Once. Sometimes silly, but she's solemn now. Aye, she's solemn now, and she goes to hang you. Quiet, man! Surely it has no bearing on the question, sir. The charge is contemplation of murder. Yes. But it strikes hard upon me that she will laugh at prayer. Continue, Mr. Proctor. Mary, tell the governor how you danced in the woods. What's this? Dancing! Uh, uh, Mr. Proctor. Abigail led the girls to the woods, Your Honor. 
and they dance there naked. Your Honour, this Mr. Paris discovered them there in the dead of night. There's the child she is. Mr. Paris, I can only say, sir, that I never saw any of them naked. You discovered them dancing in the woods. Excellency, when I first arrived from Beverly, Mr. Paris told me as much. Do you deny it, Mr. Paris? I do not, sir. But I never saw any of them naked. But she has danced! Yes, sir. Excellency, will you permit me? Oh, pray proceed. You say you never saw any spirits, men. Were never threatened or afflicted by any manifest of the devil or the devil's agents. No, sir. And yet, when those accused of witchery confronted you in court, you would faint. Saying their spirits came onto their bodies and choked you. That, that were pretense, sir. Then can you pretend to fake now? Now. Why not? Now there are no spirits attacking you, for none in this room is accused of witchcraft. So turn yourself cold now. Pretend you are attacked now. Make yourself faint. Faint! Faint? Yes, faint. Prove to us how you pretended in the court so many times. I cannot faint now, sir. Oh, can't you pretend it? I, I, I have no sense Might of it, it now. Be. Here we have no afflicting spirit loose. But in the court there was some. I never saw any spirits. Your Excellency, this is to trick the court. It's not a trick. I used to think because. Because I thought I saw spirits. Thought you saw them. But I did not, Your Honour. How could you think you saw them unless you saw them? I cannot tell you how, but I did. Uh, I heard the other girls screaming, so. And you, Your Honour, you seem to believe them, and I. Uh, it, it were only sport from the beginning, so. The whole world cried, spirits, spirits, and I. I can't be seen as the damper. I only thought I saw them, but I didn't. Surely your excellency's not taken by this simple lie. Abigail Williams. To God, every soul is precious. And his vengeance is terrible on them that take life without cause. <coughs> is it possible that the spirits you have seen are only an illusion, a deception that may cross your mind? I have been hurt, Mr. Danforth. I have seen my blood running out. I have been nearly murdered every day because I have done my duty in pointing out the devil's people. And this is my reward. To be denied, questioned, mistrusted. Child! Like I do not mistrust you. You were my Mr. Danforth. Do you think you are so mighty that the power of hell may not turn your wits? Child, what is it? I, I don't know. Oh, wind. There is a cold wind. Abby. Your Honor. I freeze. I freeze. I freeze. But they're pretending, Mr. Danforth. Your Honor, she's cold. Touch up. Mary, do you send a shadow on me? Entirely in your hands. My wife 
is innocent. Except she knows a whore when she sees one. We deny every scrap and title of this. I must answer that, sir. I will leave and not come back. She does not deny Miss Devil. She does not deny it! Remain where you are! Sit down! Mr. Paris, would you go to the court and bring out Mrs. Proctor? Mr. Paris! I'll tell not one word of what's been spoken here. And not before you enter. Now we shall touch the bottom of this swamp. Your wife, you say, is an honest woman. In her life, sir, she's never lied. There are those that cannot sing, and those that cannot weep. My wife cannot lie. Good, then. Hold! She tells me you were put out for harlotry. God have mercy on you. Right. Turn your back. Turn your back! You do not close. Now let neither of you turn to face Mrs. Proctor. No one in this room is to speak one word or raise a gesture, yes or no. Enter. Mr. Cheever. Report this testimony in all exactness. You ready? Yes, sir. Come here, woman. Now look only at me, not at your husband. In my eyes only. Yes, sir. We're given to understand that at one time you dismissed your servant, Abigail Williams. That's true, sir. For what cause did you dismiss her? You will look in my eyes only and not at your husband. The answer lies in your memory and you need no help to give it to me. Why did you dismiss Abigail Williams? She dissatisfied me. And my husband. In what way dissatisfied you? She was... Look at me! How was she slovenly? Lazy? What disturbance did she cause? Your Honour, that time I was sick. My husband is a good man, sir. He's never drunk as some are, but always at his work. But in my sickness, you see, I was a long time sick after my last baby. And I thought I saw him turning from me. And this girl... Look at me! Yes. Abigail Williams. I came to think he fancied her. So one night I lost my wits. Her out on the high road. Did he indeed turn from My me? husband is a good... Look at me! To your own knowledge, has John Proctor ever committed the crime of lechery? Answer my question! Is your husband a lecher? No, sir. Remove her. Elizabeth, tell the truth, she has Elizabeth! She spoken! Remove her. Elizabeth, I've confessed it! She only thought to save my name! It is a natural lie to tell. I beg you, stop she now! She spoke nothing of lettering! I, I believe her. him! I cannot turn my face from it anymore! This girl has always struck me false. She is a whore! You will she... not! Leave me! Leave me, I said! What is that? What is it? Girls! Girls! Why? Why do you? He's on the beam! Behind the raptor! Where? Why? Why do you call a spirit? Well, what is a spirit? I see no spirit! Oh, my face! My face! You cannot want to tear my face! Envy is a deadly sin, Mary! Abby! This is a black art to change your shape, Mary! No, I, I cannot stop my mouth! It's, it's going to work, I do! I'm, I'm here! They're tricking you! Oh, please, Mary! Oh, don't come down! Her claws! She's stretching her claws! Lies! Lies! Oh, Mary, please don't hurt me! I'm not hurting her. Why did she see this vision? She sees nothing! She sees nothing! You mustn't! Abby, you mustn't! I'm here! 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 I'm
Mr. Dunford! Why have you got him out the past few weeks? You won't see the devil, have you not? Mary, God damn all liars! Said, I cannot hear you! You will confess yourself, or you will hang! Mary, remember the angel Raphael, what he says to the point. Do that which is good, and no harm shall... The spirit! She grows! Mary, please don't! Don't! She's going to attack! She grows! She grows, look out! She's attacking! Mary, tell her you're Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Mary! You are the devil's man! Praise God! Mary! I'll not hang with you! What are you? You are combined with Antichrist, are you not? I have seen your power, Mister. You will not deny it. It's not witchcraft that these girls are fought. You are condemned. I am the man, Mister Hale. Will you confess yourself before the hell? What do you say? I say, God is dead. Hear it. Hear it. A fire. The fire is burning! I hear the boot of Lucifer! I see his filthy face! And it's my face and yours, Danforth! For those who quail now, when you know in all your black hearts that this is fraud! God damns our kind especially! And we will burn! We will burn together! Marshall, take him to the jail! Announce these proceedings. I quit this car to hell! Mr. Hale! You are pulling heaven down and raising up a whore! Excellency, a moment. Do you leave him alone? What's his business here? Excellency, hear me. It's a providence. 
Reverend Hale has returned to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. You better confess. Hear me. Rebecca has not given me a word this three months since she came. And now she sits with him, and her sister, and Martha Corey, and two or three others. And he pleads with them to confess their crimes and save their lives. Well, this is indeed a providence. And did you do this often? Not yet. Not yet. But I thought to summon you, sir, on whether we might think it would be wise to... There is news, sir, that the court, that the court must reckon with. My niece, I believe she's vanished. Vanished? I thought to advise you earlier in the week. Right. How long has she been gone? This is the third night. Mercy Lewis has gone too. She's under part four. Where might they be? Your Excellency, I think they're on a ship. My daughter told me she heard the planning last week. And tonight, I discovered my safe is broken into. She has robbed you. All my savings. I'm penniless. Mr. Paris, you are a foolish man. You profit nothing that you blame me, Excellency. I can only think that they ran off because they fit to stay in the town anymore. The rumour here speaks of rebellion. There will be no rebellion. I'll tell you what I said here, sir. In Andover, they've thrown out the court and will have nothing more to do with witchcraft. There's a faction here feeding on that news, and I fear there'll be riot here. Riot? Why, every execution I've seen nothing but high satisfaction within the town. Judge Hathorn, it were a different sort that hangs on now. Rebecca Nurse is no Bridget that lived three years with Bishop before she married him. John Proctor's no Isaac Ward that drank his family to ruin. If you put Rebecca on the gibbet and she sends up some righteous prayer, I think she'll wake a vengeance on you. What do you propose then? Excellency. I will postpone this and There will be no postponement. Now, Mr. Hale's returned. There's hope, I think. For if he bring even one of these to God, then that confession surely damns all others in the public eye. This way, unconfessed and claiming innocence, honest people will weep for them. It could not be forgot, sir, that when I summoned the congregation for John Proctor's excommunication, no more than 30 people came to hear it. That speaks of There will be no postponement. Excellency, would you believe in your opinion that we brought to God? We will sell the strife of them to adore Excellency, a dagger. What do you say? Tonight, when I opened my door to leave my house, a dagger clattered to the ground. You cannot hang this sword. There is a danger for me. I dare not step outside at night. Congratulations, Reverend Hale. We are glad to see you return to your good work. You must pardon. They will not budge. The sun won't be up in a few moments. Excellency, I must have more time. Now hear me. And fool yourselves no more. I will not receive a single plea for pardon or postponement. Them who will not confess will have. Twelve are already dead. The names of these seven are given out, and the village expects to see them die at dawn. Postponement now speaks of floundering on my part. Reprieve or pardon must cast doubt upon the guilt of them that died till now. If you fear retaliation, you must know that I would hang ten thousand if they stood against our law. Draw yourselves up like men and help me. Have you spoken with them all, Mr. Head? Oh, but Proctor is in your dungeon. What's Proctor's way now? You wouldn't know he lived. Said to take food from time to time. His wife must be well on his child now. She is, sir. Mr. Paris, what say you? You have a closer knowledge of this man? Might her presence soften him? It's possible, sir. He's not laid eyes upon her for three months. I, I should summon him. That's what brought you to me. Then we give up. Excellency, you published to the town who was striving for their confessions and then postponed a week of his mercy on your part, not floundering. Mr. Pale. God has not empowered me to stop the sun from rising. 
nor to withhold from them perfection of their punishment. <coughs> if God wills you to raise rebellion, Mr. Danforth, you are mistaken. You have heard rebellion spoken in town? Excellency, orphans wander from house to house. Abandoned cattle bellow on the high roads. Stink of rotting crops hangs everywhere, and no man may know when the harlot's cry will end his life. And you wonder if rebellion spoke. Better you should marvel they don't burn your province. You baffle me, sir. Why have you returned here? Well, it is simple. I have come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians to lie. There is blood on my head. Can you not see the blood on my head? Hush! Mrs. Proctor, I hope you are well. I'm six months before Pray my time. Pray for your juries. Would you not come for your life? Mr. Hale, would you speak with the woman? Mrs. Proctor, your husband's about to hang this morning. I've heard it. You know I have no connection with the court. I call my own. I would save your husband's life, but if he hangs and I'm his murderer, do you understand me? What do you want of me? Mrs. Proctor, these past three months I have gone like our Lord into the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way. For damnation is doubled on a minister who counsels men to lie. It is no lie! You cannot speak of lies! It is a lie! They are innocent! No more! I'll have no more of that! Life, woman, life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. I beg you now, prevail upon your husband to confess. <coughs> Let him give his lie. Quite a lot before God's judgment in this. For it may well be that God damns a liar, less than he that throws away his life for pride. You plead with him. You will not listen to another. Isn't that the devil's argument? Proctor, you are not summoned here for disputation. Is there no wifely love in you? He will die with the sunrise. Your husband. Do you understand that? <coughs> what do you say? Will you speak with him? Take her out. There is nothing to gain here. Let me speak with him. Excellent. Will you plead for his confession? Or will you not? I promise nothing. Let me speak with him. I see light in the sky, Mr. I see counsel with your wife. God help you turn your back on hell. You've been chained? Yes. The child? It grows. You are a marvel, Elizabeth. I come for my life now. I know. I've already confessed. Many. Rebecca? Not Rebecca. She's one foot in heaven now. Nothing can hurt her. And Giles? Giles is dead. When was he hanged? He wasn't hanged. He wouldn't answer yes or no to his indictment. For if he denied the charge, They'd hang him surely, and auction out his property. So he stood mute, and died Christian under the law. His sons will have the farm. Then how did he die? They pressed him, John. Press? He laid great stones upon his chest until he pleaded yes or no. They say he gave him but two words. More weight. More weight. He was a fearsome man, Giles Corey. I've been thinking that I would confess myself. 
What would you say to that? I cannot judge you, John. And what would you have me do? Do is what you want. You have my support. I want you living, John. That's said. It's a pretense, Elizabeth. What is? I cannot have the gibbet like a say. It's a fraud, I'm not that man. My honesty's broke, Elizabeth. I'm not a good man. Nothing's spoiled by giving him this lie. Yet you've not confessed till now. That speaks of goodness in you. Spite. Oh, this spite keeps me silent. It's hard to give a lie to dogs. I would have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. It means nothing that I should forgive you. Will you forgive yourself? It's your soul, John. Only know this. Whatever you do, it's a good man that does it. I've thought hard these past three months. You can take my sins upon yourself. No, enough. I never knew what to say. I loved you, John. I kept a cold hand. I'll not hear it. I know you. What do you say, Proctor? The son is soon up. Do what you want. But let no one judge you. There is no higher judge into heaven than John Proctor. Forgive me, John. You're a good man. I want my life. You will confess. I will have my life. God be praised. It's the providence. You will confess! Crocker will confess! Why do you cry it? It's evil, is it not? It's evil. I cannot judge you, John. I cannot. Then who will judge me? God in heaven. What is John Proctor? What is John Proctor? I think it is honest. I think so. I am no saint. Let Rebecca go like a saint. For me, it's fraud. I cannot judge you, John. Would you give them this lie? Say it. Would you ever give them this? You would not. If tongues of fire were singeing you, you would not. It's evil. Good then. It is evil. And I do it! Praise to God, man, you should be blessed in heaven for this. No, no, let's have it. Mr. Cheever, you ready? Oh, why must it be written? We've got an instruction of the villagers. We shall post this upon the church door. Now then, speak slowly and directly for Mr. Cheever. Mr. Crockett, did you see the devil in your life? Come on, man, there is light in the sky and the town people wait for the scaffold. I would give out this news. Did you see the devil? <coughs> I did. Praise God. When well, he came to you, what were his demands? Did you bid him do his work upon the earth? He did. And you bound yourself to his service. Back in earth. John. You're well then. Courage, man. Courage. Let her witness your good example, so she may come to God. Now listen, Mrs. Nass. Continue, Mr. Proctor. Did you bind yourself to the devil's service? John. Take her out! Surely you see no point in continuing this conspiracy any further. Will you confess yourself with him? John. I say, will you confess you. yourself, Mrs. Nurse? It's a lot. How may I have done myself? I cannot. Mr. Proctor, when the devil came to you, did you see Rebecca Nurse and his company? Courage, man. Courage. Did you see her with the devil? No. Did you ever see Mary Easty with the devil? I did not. Did you ever see Martha Corey with the devil? No. Did you see anyone with the devil? I did not. You mistake me. I am not empowered to trade your life for a lie. You must have seen some person with the devil! I speak on my own sins. 
I cannot judge another. Excellency, there's enough he has confessed. Please let him sign it. It's a great service, sir. It's a weighty name. It will strike the village that he has confessed. I beg you, let him sign it. The sun is up, Excellency. Come then. Sign your testimony. You have all witnessed it. It is enough. You will not sign it. You have all witnessed it. What more is needed? Do you jest with me? You will sign your name or it is no confession, mister! A second name, man. Thanks be to the Lord. If you please. No. Mr. Proctor, I must No. Have. No, I have signed it. You have seen me. It is done. You have no need for this. Proctor, the village must have- Damn the done. village! I confess to God, and God sees my name on this. It is enough. Enough not. Enough. You came to save my soul. Well, here, I have confessed myself. You have not confessed I myself. have confessed myself! Is there no good penitence until it's public? God does not need my name nailed upon the church. God sees my name on this. God knows how black my sins are. Mr. Proctor. You will not use me. I am no Sarah Good or Elena. I am John Proctor. And you will not use me. Wish to use me. I have three sons. How may I teach them to walk like men in the world when I have sold my friends? You have not sold your friends! I blacken all of them and this is nailed to the church. The very day they hang for silence! Mr. Proctor, I must have good and legal proof. You are the you... High Court. Your word is good enough. Tell them I confess myself. Say Proctor broke his knees and wept. Say what you will. But my name It is the same. Be... Is it not? If I report it, are you signed to it? No, it's not the same. What I say and what I sign to is not the same. Do you wish to deny this confession when you are free? I mean to deny the nothing. Explain to Mr. Proctor, Proctor. But it is my name! Because I cannot have another in my life. Because I lied and signed myself to lies. Because I am not worth the dust on the feet of those that hang. I have given you my soul. Leave me my name. Is that document a lie? If it's a lie, I will not accept it. You will place your honest confession in my hands, or I cannot keep you from the rope. Proctor, Proctor! You and you will hang, you cannot. <laughs> I can. And there's the first miracle. Take him! <laughs> 